What's up, Kurt? What's up, man? Not too much. Not too much. Eating as always. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I have to drink my calories at this point. I got. I got a shake right here. There you go. It's um. You ever drink the hydrolyzed casein? Yeah, I have. Super hard to find though. Not a lot of brands make it. Yeah, I know, right? Um, it is very hard to find, and most people don't even like it. Most people uh, don't even buy it, right? Yeah. When I, the, I think the price, the price probably pushes people out of it too, right? Yeah. For me, um, it's actually the one protein that I can consume and not have any GI issues. Oh shit. Okay. It's so interesting. So whey ISO will mess you up? Uh yes, unless I can find like a really like like an unflavored, like really pure one. I can send you a link to one if you want. Yeah. Well, actually, I was gonna say we we do have actually some good news with our sponsor, Rebel Fit. And they're gonna be doing a $350 giveaway. Okay. Or so through the month of March, anyone who's who uses code beef10 will get entered into this giveaway. And at the end of the month, we'll announce the winner, $350 gift card, order whatever supplements you want delivered anywhere in Canada. Um, on top of that, what I'd really like to do is have the winner be a guest and do a little cameo. Um, and that'll be an open invitation if they would want to do that or not. So yeah, um, use code beef10, rebelfitnutrition.com. And so yeah, looking forward to that, guys, for sure. Um, it's only in Canada? Enough. Yeah, only in Canada, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as shipping goes. I'm sure we could figure it out otherwise, but for now, we'll just do it Canada. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, that's that's all the news I have. What about you, man? What's going on? Nothing. Same stuff, man. Just getting ready for the Arnold. I got my actual ticket in the mail today. Yep. Like the hard ticket. It's kind of nice. You. Actually send one out. I've decided that I'm not going to go. Yeah. But um, I just got to focus on training, right? I had that week that was kind of like a wash. Now I'm I'm having like, a really good uh, training momentum being built up. Um, and I got to save money, man. You know what I mean? Like I don't have any uh, stake in the game over there right now. Yeah. You know, I get like, it. Uh, yeah. Like I was going to go down with Justin, but um, you know, he's going down with the client stuff. So he's good. Um, my girl's going down there for work. So she's going to be okay. busy. Yeah. That's come down and hang out with you. But like, it, then it's just, you know, just spend money to hang out with the boys. No, I get it. You know? We'll go. If you're going to the Olympia, we can we can always put that together. We got to book tickets soon for it, though. I'll be at the Olympia one hundred percent. I'm actually yeah. That's why I want to I want to book all of those things and still be able to kind of have money left over to, especially with prep right Life. now. Just try to book book all my accommodations and then be good. So yep, that's that's it. But um, the Olympia though, funny enough, is on my birthday, so oh, wow. that's gonna be a really good time. So I'll definitely be there this year. One hundred. What birthday is that? October twelfth. No, uh, what at what age? Oh, I'll be 30. Fuck, what am I? I'm 92. So what does that make? I'll be turning 33. Yeah. Yeah. 33. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah. So it should be good. And uh, yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Bigger? It's, Which uh, one? it's called Bigger. Let me see if I can pull it up. Maybe um, it's by the it's by the, the Joe. It's like the story of the Joe Weeder brothers. Oh, I have not seen it. I know. I know, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. That um that movie came out. It was on my birthday. I'm like, oh man, like so. I went and <laughs> went to see it on my birthday. It premiered in in one uh, theater here downtown Toronto, only one, and it was like right in the middle of downtown. I went there, and I swear to God, there was three people in there. It was <laughs> it was so funny. But I'm like, yeah, I was like, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I'll be honest, it's a great movie. Yeah, I get, I gotta check it out. If you're I, a bodybuilding fan, if you if you appreciate the IFBB it's the story of the IFBB it's, yeah it's, it's it tells exactly how the IFBB came to be um from the ground up as uh Joe Weider basically took bodybuilding into his own hands against another organization at the time it's a really cool story so yeah who was what was it NABA what was the other organization I can't remember but um it was a little rivalry they had okay and I think that was like you know when I can't remember. I haven't watched it in a while, but I'm pretty sure that was like when Sergio was there and then mm -hmm. Arnold and then they were like, mm, your guy can't compete in our thing. And they were like, well, we'll make a new thing then. <laughs> and now that that thing, the new thing that they made, the IFBB is now the the main thing. So the it's thing. Pretty, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty much the only thing. The only thing. So I mean, there's other things, I guess, but 
very humble know. beginnings to know what it is now. Yeah, so, very cool. You know, I, had, yeah. I do have to check that out. Did you see um, on Netflix the Arnold Schwarzenegger, the three-part Schwarzenegger thing? Uh, the the documentary series? Yeah. The new one? I started watching it and kind of got bored. What did, what did you think? It's, uh, I liked the, So it was in three parts, right? I feel like the first part was his Austrian stuff and – yeah. Um, his upbringing the second part was like bodybuilding and the third part was like his political career i thought the first two were well done and the third one kind of lost me a little bit okay i didn't really care about his political career um i just i was impressed with the footage though because they did a really good job enhancing some of that stuff it was a lot of the footage from pumping iron that hadn't been seen but they like re whatever you call it, like re-enhance the footage though to make it look good it's pretty amazing what they did with like the old eight millimeter tape crap to make it look yeah, I uh, no, I just thought it was kind of cool. Just and not, I'm not like a huge Arnold fan. I respect him, whatever, and you know what he did. But I, I'm, I like the other guys from that era better than him. Yeah, I, no, I agree with you there. Um, what actually, the one thing I did like for sure was like his tenacity and his. He wanted to be the uh, what was it, what what role was it? Was it Hercules or something like that? It was it was some role that he kept getting turned down. Some guy was saying, like, you're not going to be able to do this. There's no way. And then he just kept, he went to, like, like like acting classes. Yep. He went to, like, horseback riding classes. He went to, like, so many different classes. Just He's probably uh, Conan the Barbarian. That's the one. Yeah. And I was like, that is a very cool story. I, I really enjoyed that part. But I just couldn't stay focused on the rest of his like yeah. acting career. I was like, okay. Cause that was kind of the highlight. I, I felt like yeah, the acting stuff like, and the political stuff lost me totally. Yeah. I didn't know about that, But I thought the bodybuilding stuff was cool. I got to watch that part then from a different you point know? of view. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was just going to, cause it, cause it skimmed through his bodybuilding in the, in, in the first part. So I was like, Oh, is that the only bodybuilding stuff? I'm like, ah, but if it, if it, in the second part, if it's all about the, it goes back. Yeah. It goes back to it. Yeah. It has a lot of really cool. Like you see all those guys, Columbo and Zane, um, oh, Danny Padilla, you know, and there's a lot, I feel like the thing with Arnold too, is there's a lot of the story that's, you know, at least from his point of view is never told. Like if you talk to any of these other guys, he really screwed a ton of people mm -hmm. out of fame and prosperity, you know, and the amount of guys that probably, there's probably an equal amount of people that hate him, that competed with him, that actually like him. I think Samir is one of the only people that talks positively about him. You know, I mean, he really fucks Zane over big time. You know, in 1980, he fucked he fucked um, Danny Padilla over. These guys what he, kept. What did he do? Which, when he came back for 80, he didn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. So the rules were different back then, mm -hmm. right? They announced. Now they announce the competitors. They didn't announce it, and he showed up. You you know what he did to Zane or no? Mm -mm. That one's probably the worst. So Zane was the incumbent winner. Right? He ran. He won 77, 78, 79, and he was the incumbent and expected to win. In 80, if you listen to Mike Mentzer, Mike Mentzer claims he was going to win. But, um, and a couple weeks out, so Zane had a house at that point. What, a side note, what's interesting too, it shows the difference in bodybuilding back then versus now. Zane never made enough money as a bodybuilder until 1979 to only be a bodybuilder. He stayed as a, a high school teacher teaching chemistry all the way until 1978. So he was even Mr. Olympia and he still had to work a day job. And that's why the Olympia is when it is because it gave them all summer off to train and prep. And then they could go right in the fall to mm -hmm. the show. But he, um, Zane bought a house when he retired from his day job in Palm Springs and he was getting a tan by his pool. And they had these, when I was a little kid, they had these lawn chairs that were like vinyl straps, basically suspended yeah, sp between metal. Well, I grew up, I was a, like a little kid when he was, I was born in the 70s. So like I remember a lot of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. In this time. Uh, I know those like, chairs. I know right? exactly what you're talking about. It was like a three-part like lounge chair that you'd put by a pool, but they were metal back then framed with like plastic vinyl straps, basically, that you laid on. And it collapsed under his weight and it fell in. And the metal part where it came in crushed his dick. And his he like literally crushed it and started bleeding. And he lost a ton of blood. And he was rushed to the hospital and they had to do a transfusion. And you think about it, he's two or three weeks out for the Olympia, right? Like you're already bare bones. Like you're not running, you're not super healthy at this point, right? Like yeah. 
he's not got anything in reserve. He has not been eating right. Um, and so he was not in fantastic shape and Arnold came to see him and he confided in Arnold that he was nervous about competing in the AD Olympia. And Arnold was like, no, dude, you have to, you're the incumbent. You're going to win this. Arnold didn't once say a word about showing up himself. Told Frank to go. Frank, holy shit together, went to the 1980 Olympia and there was Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like, you gotta be kidding me. And they, they didn't really ever talk much again. Like his friends. God damn. I mean, it's not it's not Arnold's fault he got his dick crushed. You know what I mean? Like no, but but wouldn't you tell like if if you and I were competing together and I was like, I would let you know that I was like I, I this is a make-believe scenario because I'm clearly not giving you a run for your money. But my point is like I would let you know if I was a competitor of yours that I'm competing against you. I'm not gonna pretend to be your friend and fucking lie to you. Like that doesn't make any sense. I guess, yeah. That's I mean, sort of the behavior that he he did. Most of his career, he pushed people out of the way so he could get better. I think I think he was just like he was uh, he was clever, you know, and uh, and he and he could trick people. But just because you can trick someone doesn't mean it's you know it, it goes two <laughs> ways. Also, you know, it's like if there's a guy there, you know, in your hotel room, and he looks like he's a, like ready to go on stage. I mean, it, like he would look like he's dieted down or not, right? Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, the, and one of your competitors, you know, I'd be like, I'd probably think this guy's tricking me. That's what I would think. Cause just knowing how competitors can be. Yeah. I mean, I, who knows back then they probably, they didn't, you know, 1980, they didn't get quite as lean as they do now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But, um, um but yeah, yeah, still, it just, you know, it was just stories like that, that you're like, Ugh. yeah, no, for sure. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, Look at people on the top, man. Like, look how many people you've had to step on to get there. I'm not saying everyone at the top had to step on people, but there are a yeah. lot at the very top that have stepped on a lot of people. And yep. that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's some of that's dog, life, right? You know, so, yeah. But, um, so don't get stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. You're it's right. It's like you fucking, uh, watch your back, man, you know, and have people you can trust, right? That's all you can do. So, yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, Arnold stories. I bet, I bet, like every single one of those competitors at the time hated him, hundred percent. I can definitely believe that. I'm sure, well, yeah, because he was pompous when he walked around the gym and stuff. Yeah. Plus, it's like it's it's everything. Like he he had nothing missing. He was he was handsome, charismatic. He was tall. He was big. He was shredded. He had the best chest, the best arms. <laughs> you know, the best back. It's like, I mean, I. Yeah, I'd feel good. Exactly. And you want everything. So I'd feel good too, you know? And uh, I, I really, I really appreciate the fact that Arnold um, has displayed his talents across his entire life. As, like as far as going from actor to, to body, to Mr. Olympia, and then to, into politics. I mean, there's no one that's ever done something like that. No. So I probably never will again. Yeah. So it's, it's phenomenal, man. You know, I've, uh, I've I've thought about you know how cool to be you know to meet him, and uh, you know each year that goes by I'm like I hope I do because you know each year's going by right so yeah well see you got to go to the Arnold you have to compete in the Arnold and you have to win your class in the Arnold and then you get to meet him I know right yeah, yeah. So, you have a better strategy than me yeah uh, well the you know probably the best strategy is just uh, wait for him to walk in or that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, that no, that's probably not a good strategy. You're right. Win winning is a better strategy. Um, but yeah, I'll start working on my speech. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I got to get the invitation first, right? <laughs> when's your uh, When's your next show? Well, I'm, I'm prepping now, so I'm gonna, you know, I'm trying to get ready for New York. And uh, oh, you're into New York Pro? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, I'll come see you. That's awesome. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, I've done New York already two times. And are you really like are show. you going to do something right after New York Pro, or are you done after that? For no, bit? I'm going to do New York. I'm going to do Toronto, which is three weeks later. Okay. And then I'm going to do, um, after that, I'm going to do uh, one U.S. show, maybe California. Okay. Um, one more U.S. show, and then well, and then maybe uh, the Vancouver Pro, because now the Vancouver Pro uh, announced that they're having open bodybuilding. What's up, Big Mo? Yo, what's going Mo? on? Um, the Vancouver Pro is now, uh, they have open bodybuilding again this year. So that's cool, right? That's very cool. 
Yeah. I'll agree. take you uh, after the New York pro. I'll take you to dinner. We won't overdo it though. So now Sounds you're still good. Me. Yeah. We went to uh cheesecake factory last time. And okay. I'll take you somewhere better than that. Yeah. yeah I was going to say it was kind of whatever. <laughs> yeah. I ordered the weirdest shit, you know, like when you go there and there's just so many choices, I ordered like, yeah. like a breakfast omelet and, uh, a salad or something like yeah well and also like if you went when you're coming off stage too your cravings are kind of weird right i feel like the yeah. i always want like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and milk or something yeah. really freaking bizarre man that like like has no significance to me at all it's like the dumbest thing but it's like the crazy crap you crave like peanut butter i know you know it's it's weird too because when you're when you're done competing you have like weird cravings that you wouldn't normally have no and you know i went in there and i'm like you know i, I really want some carrot cake that's the one thing that i really kind of like and, uh, and I go in there and I order all that shit. And then I was so full and I felt so sick from what I ate that I didn't eat the carrot cake. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. My stomach was not happy that night. I had to, I literally walked down the street, um, from our Airbnb. I actually got lost because my phone died. I didn't know where I was. And I came back at like 3 a.m. And I got into bed at like 4 a.m. And, uh, <laughs> girlfriend's like, where the fuck were you? I'm like, I had to walk. Like my stomach was so full. It was just a weird night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you were alone. <laughs> yeah. It, man, I felt so sketchy because I was walking down like some New Jersey street. Like, I don't know where I am. Like I'm like in New Jersey. Um, yeah. That's not, that's not like a part of the state that you're just going to like want. It's like all highways. Yeah. No, I was in uh Tanique. Uh, yeah, Tinek. Yeah, Tinek, I'm just saying, yeah. like, it's just a weird because it's close to the city, but it's very yeah. overpopulated. There's a lot of roads and cars, and yeah, I was I was walking for a while, like, and I, I'm walking by this one convenience store, and I'm like, I think I walked too far, man. I'm gonna try to turn around here and get back. <laughs> started see, I started seeing some weird folk, and I'm like, shit, I've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's up, Mo? Did you train today? Rest today? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Is my sound better than normal? Uh. Average, average. Because I'm trying to use these mics, so I don't know if it's. Oh, it is actually better. Yeah, it's when better. you hold it. Yeah, when you hold it close, it does. It does work. Okay, good. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. That's cool. Um, what did you ask me? Uh, did you train today or did you rest? No, yeah, today was rest day. I figured. I didn't. I didn't see you at the gym today. I went in there to do uh, uh, calves and abs. Oh yeah, so rest day for you too. Yeah, <laughs> but trying. now now it's a calf abdominal day. So. That's good though. It's good to have that, man. You're on prep. It makes good. sense. Yeah, it felt pretty good because, um, like, dude, like, I need to kill my abs, and like, I won't, I won't have the energy any other time. Yeah, no, hundred percent. They always abs and calves always get pushed to the back burner if you try to mm. do one of your main body parts. Anytime we do calves, usually on shoulder day, but we usually do them before oh. we start shoulders. Yeah. It's like. You you know if you do calves first, you're going to put effort into them, but you're not going to not put effort into shoulders. Correct, <laughs> it's, exactly. It's, yeah, too true. it's too important, like you know. Where like, if you do shoulders first and you smash them, it's easy just to do like a few like shit sets on the standing calf raise or something and call it a day. Yep. So that's the um, methodology behind. Yeah, the, like uh, Jay Cutler used to do the calves before chest, hmm. chest yeah. and calf day. Yeah, I don't think calves need to be overly worked unless you're trying to bring them up. I mean, I've I have pretty good calves. Probably helps just walking around at 320 pounds. I walk yeah. my dog a lot, <laughs> so yeah. but I do smash them. Like we'll do, we'll usually do like a circuit, man. We'll do like a standing calf, a seated calf, and we'll also do like the tibia like raises, and like you do like four sets of that. Like you can barely walk. Yeah, that's exactly what I do too. And I I literally bought a AV's uh, calf ebook. Like two years ago, and I still I still use the uh, well. I'm not going to give it away, but the protocols he's got in there are solid. That's for sure. His calves are crazy, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Because he, I'm pretty sure he used to train them like savagely. Like the workouts that he has in his ebook are very hard, you know. So that's that's how you're going to get them to grow if they're stubborn. That's the thing. It's like so many people are like, oh, I I can't grow my calves, and then they train them like absolute pussies. Like you know what I mean? It's like you, you approach it like it's another body part. Do three or four exercises like really hard working sets to failure like they'll grow you know yeah, yeah. Well, it's like an afterthought for everyone right like you said it was like the end of legs yeah you're like yeah. tired like what do you expect yeah. to happen and i think yeah. a lot of people with calves too like they just defeat themselves mentally on it because they might not have like great calf genetics so they'll just like literally decide that like once you decide that you can't grow a body part you're not going to grow it yeah 100 you know? 
yeah, it's it's just nonsense. You might not be able, you know, might not be able to have calves like Antoine or Quentin, but you can definitely put some size on them, right? It only makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I basically gave up on even trying to do calves after a leg day. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I will fuck around a little bit, but I don't even count it as calf training. I just consider that like basically when I train calves, I do it mostly for blood flow. The the best thing about the calves is that they they pump blood back to your heart. So yeah. when I'm when I'm training them uh, after a leg day, I'm stimulating them. But then when I'm training them on their own day, I mean it's a pretty hard workout. But I don't feel tired from that workout whatsoever. I feel like like you said, like that was a rest day still. It's not. It's definitely not fatiguing my central nervous system because all I did was just yeah, I just sat on two machines and then I did tibia and then I did that a couple times and I did some donkey, did some abs, uh, a giant set for abs, three sets, got out of there, done. Yeah. So do you normally train abs in the off season too, or only in prep? I mean, I was doing abs uh, before uh, my chest day. That was, that was part of the routine because Eric had me doing them before my chest day. Um, but then I'll be honest, I stopped doing it. Cause at some point I didn't like the way I felt when I was doing them before I trained. And then I tried to do them after I trained when I wasn't so full and then I got lazy with it. <laughs> so that's, that's basically what happened. I, find, I don't need much calves. Like I'll do like three hard sets and like they're just toast after that. Like, usually I do like decline crunches. Yeah. Not sit ups, just like crunches. Like if you saw my range of motion, you would question if I'm like doing anything at all. But <laughs> I, I like the uh, just like a slight decline, just so you can like stretch the abdom the abdominals and then just like crunch on them. Like don't come all the way up so that your hip flexors are engaging or anything like that. Yeah. Just actually crunch the abs. Like nothing should be going on the hips or the quads, right? And uh, my my posing coach that I used. For my last prep, Alyssa, she got me to do those. Yeah. I, mean, I thought they worked really well. Definitely helped my ab control on stage, you know. Yeah, I did I did those before Toronto, um, because we talked about that. You said yeah. you're doing a lot of declining. I'm like, oh fuck. Cause I thought I thought I would like maybe hurt myself doing it with that much weight, but I'm like fucking Mo's doing it. So then I got on there and at first I can only do six reps, but I mean, yeah, that's like that's like the hardest uh abdominal exercise because it's it's really like that's like your compound because you still have to use your legs to hold yourself there and stuff. Um, but man, it definitely works better than if you don't have good ab control, if you don't really connect with your abs well, then you have to work on like more body weight stuff, not machines. Um, I, I don't mind machines now so much because I'll do the laying, the laying one where you literally just lay there and there's no weight at all. Um, and I'll do, I'll do the crunch one where you kind of just, you crunch with, with your legs too, like into a C with your legs and, and upper. And then uh, I'll do the decline crunches. And I'll do uh, the Roman chair, like the leg lifts. Uh, I really, I really like doing those. And you know, up here we have like a little circuit corner thing, so just bop around in there for a bit. And I don't know, it feels good, man. It feels good when you're not fucking full all the time to do some ab training, and then you feel like, oh, like it's kind of hard there instead of it always being bloated <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah, gotta love it. Also, calf pump feels pretty nice too. You know, yeah, it, it just that, must be done, man. Like you don't want somewhere to come around and like you're you don't want to wear shorts, like you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Like yeah. you want to put shorts on and be like, hell yeah, everyone's gonna see my calves today. Like that's that's how I feel anytime I wear shorts, which is not often at all. Like I'm a big pants guy. Like the one time I wore shorts, like in the last like month, the guys at the gym were literally just like, wow. <laughs> they're like they're like it's like when uh when you see a guy that has a beard all the time, but then he shaves it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you posted that uh was it like a back day or something where you're wearing shorts and just every comment was like shorts <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at this guy wearing shorts yeah yeah no, i mean uh when you, when you got big fucking legs i mean you know shorts are either comfortable or like really uncomfortable you know dude i don't know how you guys wear shorts on leg day man i just I, like my skin like when my skin touches the pads and stuff like yeah. that like i'm sticking to the pads as i'm trying to get like in and out of the hamster curl leg extension it just pisses me off so much. I just like wearing pants, just like slide, like sliding around on shit. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything to make me a little bit more or less miserable. <laughs> the only the only reason, honestly, why I like to wear shorts on leg day sometimes is just so I can like look at my quads when I do extensions. I like that. I get that. I get that. What's up, Justin? What's up? What's going on? Justin, do you wear shorts or legs on or, or legs? Do you wear shorts or pants on leg day? Pants always. Yeah, buddy. Hmm. Yeah. So like, what kind, of like what kind of pants though like like uh sweatpants or joggers well, or tights yeah but they they end up being leggings but i mean like it's usually supposed <laughs> to be like pants yeah 
you can this guy cannot find a loose pair of pants. There's no way that you own a pair of pants. That's what I'm saying. So they yeah. become leggings, you know. What yeah. um what what size pants are you wearing? Like did you get like a, uh, well, like a pair of what four X? Yeah, four X, yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Every everything's either it's it's four X and over. So even what brand, bro? What brand do you find a four XL pants in? Oh yeah, I, yeah. I actually, you know what? You know what's funny? Like uh the the pants that I've been wearing the longest is Alpha League. Okay, okay. And and honestly, those are the only ones I haven't torn. <laughs> All the all the other ones after a year they're done six months done the alpha elite hardcore man they're fucking they're 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 keeping I haven't put in any holes in them yet. and they're four x four x yeah how the fuck alpha elite makes four xl or maybe it's a little bit but uh, honestly there's the only one that they they uh, they fit like but, true, uh, like it, a might, true it might 4X. even it, it might even be a little bit smaller than four x but all the other pairs it's it's four x it has yeah. to be. Man, you gotta you gotta send me over a few brands, bro. I never I never think a pair of four XL pants in my life. I don't think <laughs> I'm wearing like two XL. Like my ass is like busting out of them and shit. Like I just I actually I actually found like uh, there's this place in in um, on the South Shore of Montreal. I actually found a place where they sell pants like going out pants that fit. Hmm. Like first time I've ever like worn something that looks nice. Is it like, like a big and tall store? I could actually wear. Is it is it a big and tall store? No, not even. Well, they go they go they go uh, up till six XL, but it's all stretch. So like, even though a, they because you know like like we have this store here, it's called Max Smith. So it's like this like big and tall store, but everything's mm. like baggy, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but where I went to, I didn't I didn't even expect anything to fit. But when I went everything stretch so you take like let's say i had like 5xl but because it's stretch it it kind of molds through the whole like your whole shape you know so you don't yeah. look like you're wearing a like a uh you know a, a, a garbage bag you know moors do you guys do you guys ever like uh go to moors like no. yeah moors doesn't fit yeah no but it does now because they they start doing the same thing trust me man if if they don't if they can't fit you bro I'll buy you a fucking suit. How about that? <laughs> I to, uh, when I lived in Newfoundland, I lived next to I'll go, but I mean, big no. Store. Yeah, like, just... like, like, um, like they'll they'll fit you and they'll they'll put you in something that stretches because they now like, dude. I I went to Moore's before a couple of years ago, and they never had this type of fabric. Okay, but now because people actually want to look good and be somewhat comfortable, they're wear they're they're making their their pants like. Like the shit that we would wear, you know what I mean? Like they stretch yeah. a lot. Like your quads will be pushing out, but you're gonna be like feeling pretty good. Trust, about me. Trust me. Like I was very skeptical, um, but I was like super happy, bro. And I didn't pay like too much to get like a nice jacket, pants, everything fitted. I was very happy there. So I don't know, man. But like, there's not there's not a lot of like good bodybuilding clothing. We like like with Jed North, like Mo, you wear Jed North, right? Yeah. Like they for the longest time they never had three XL, and now yes. finally they do. But it's I mean, you wouldn't fit in it. <laughs> no, I don't fit in it. Like they have like a, a couple of tank tops that I fit in that like are three XL, but they're just like a different style. Like majority of their three XL stuff doesn't fit me. Like it's funny actually because they, they they sent me so much stuff that it's just down in my storage room now. But they even messaged me again today and they were like they wanted to send me more stuff. And I was like, well, what are you sending me? And then they sent me a list, and it's just a bunch of stuff that I know is not going to fit me. So I just told them not to send it to me. I was like, don't yeah. wait like, on me, bro. Like, I'm never going to. But, so but, yeah, please into it, but like, yeah. I never, I don't like wearing anything tight ever. It's just yeah. not, I don't feel comfortable in it, especially in the off season. Yeah. So if you like that shit, it, it might, you know, be good for you. If you like to have like a tight, like tank top on or something like that, some guys like that. Yeah. I yeah. can't do it. Yeah. No, I, I don't mind wearing uh, pants if they're nice and stretchy. For leg day, that's cool. Uh, I used to wear leggings a lot, but I just can't handle the fucking swamp ass anymore, man. It's too much. <laughs> can't I can't do it. <laughs> you know, feel it feels nice though. You know, once in a while you put on those tights, you hit a leg day. It's like I don't know, man. Like it just it feels different because you got. Yeah, that. I wear the Jed Nord sweatpants. Like their their sweatpants are like two XL. Like most of them fit. Yeah, me. not all of them, but some of them do. And then ones like they're tight, but they're kind of like a snug like like they're nice to train in. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I love those. I love those Jed Nord pants. 
Yeah, they're nice, right? They're very nice, really nice. And and they're also they look nice too, so they're comfortable. They're good in the gym. So uh, you have a code. <laughs> Basically, doing a promotion here. Big Mo. Big Mo. There you go. So no, that's fucking awesome, man. Um, what's what's that company you were saying, Justin? What's that one called again? Uh, you're talking about the the um, the clothing that's like to go out clothing. The the stuff that you wear, like the forex, like the the clothing company that you like to wear for the gym. Oh, um, well, there's there's a couple there's a couple like um, uh, companies here that are like uh, here in Quebec, but some some just started. Like I I, I seen that Mo wear um, uh, Iron Iron Legacy. Oh yeah, that one's cool. Um, he's been he's been wearing them, so I, I saw it. So they have it here. Um, it's just some some clothes are like you have to have four XL and then there's some like it depends on the colors i don't know like it's uh but honestly it's it's clothing that has like it's a little you can have baggy like sometimes it will he'll just the guy will just message me and he'll say hey man like i have actually have i made one for you you know like <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah, that, you know? Too, yeah. um and uh and then there's like uh this other one that's like la brute and then we have uh, aquila also that's here um but yeah that's pretty much the ones that i wear and then i wear like a tank top or whatever mm -hmm. under but usually i, I kind of wear like just like um just like a t-shirt or something uh to train and then like sometimes i'll, I'll have just like a uh like a flannel or, or whatever so let's go um like if you're if you're getting ready for leg day chest day back day arm day shoulder day what are you what are you putting on do you, do you, uh, well, do you have something? Do you have something like we'll, we'll go. We'll go through everybody. Yeah. But, um, like, what, what's your outfit for each day? Legs. I'll have something that covers up my upper body. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll probably have, probably like, all going to be the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll have pants. You know, I always wear pants. It's always pants. Okay. Whatever, whatever uh, body part I train. Other than the summer, sometimes I'll put like uh, shorts on. But uh, for sure, like now in the winter, I always wear pants. Um, and I'll have like always like a flannel, a t-shirt, and then I'll have like a, a tag top if I, I'm training upper body, you know? How many flannels do you own? Six, seven. That's a respectable amount of flannels. Yeah. Do you have any cut off at the sleeves yet? I have one, yeah. The one you I bought in the, in Kissimmee. You got to have at least one for sure. Yeah, I had one in Kissimmee. I haven't worn it, but I wear it in the summer. Yeah. So definitely. I just wear, I just wear like, my my flannels until i don't fit in them and then i cut the sleeves yeah that's, that's, <laughs> that's the process right there yeah. um and, and besides that you're mostly like a tank top guy right like you like tank top yeah guys. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Like depends top. how i feel you know if i yeah, if i feel, mean, flannels, I'll, just, feel. I'll just keep the t-shirt <laughs> yeah do you have days where you don't feel huge because if you do then you're that's body dysmorphia dude yeah i know i know we all have it <laughs> So it's just like <laughs> you. I feel like I feel like it's okay for us to have it. I don't feel like it's okay for you to have it. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're fucking 320, 325. You... <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking small compared. The to guy you, talks man. like he's small, you know. <laughs> I literally see you in the gym, and I like put my fucking jacket back on. <laughs> I, I just leave. I go home. <laughs> like, oh, I was the biggest guy in the gym for five minutes, and now Justin. <laughs> oh fuck, uh, Kurt. What do you What are you wearing for uh, leg day, chest day, back day? Usually covered up, same stuff, sweatpants, shitty old stuff. I usually don't buy new stuff for the gym. I'll wear all banged up old stuff. Always baggy? Uh, it depends. I mean, it, the problem is I'm short, so if it's baggy, then it's way too freaking long on me, too. Then it's like a dress. He's just a dress, yeah. yeah. So it's like if I wear like an XL, it's super long. It looks ridiculous. It's okay, so, on leg day, though. it's okay to have a little bit of length on leg day. Like, you know, yeah, I'm just saying like I, I'm an awkward height, so... But look at Sean Farida, man. He robbed me. It. Sean yeah. Farida got shirts on down to his fucking shins. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Sean Farida's a little bigger than me, though. So that's Mr. Olympia right there. I've seen uh I've seen like uh who's it? Uh, Max Charles wearing like a fucking 8XL something. It was it was so long, man. It was like past his knees, this shirt. But I mean his upper body was filling it out. <laughs> But like, you no, know, it's like yeah. it's like tight on the arms, like down to the knees. <laughs> yeah, it's like you must have really like looked like deep in like Walmart, you know, somewhere to find that eight XL, just like a complete box, you know. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, what about what about you, Mo? What What do you say? You're you're never wearing shorts. You're always wearing pants. Yeah. yeah, I might wear shorts like once a month, just to, just to let everyone know that my legs are absolutely massive. But besides <laughs> that, <laughs> I just I uh, see you. Uh, I see you wearing tank tops sometimes. 
so so this is pretty much what the size of my wardrobe yeah i'll wear a tank top I mean, we're gonna begin lately. I gotta feel. I gotta feel really full to wear a tank top. If I'm like having like a skinny day, then it's it's gonna be a baggy shirt for sure. But what what determines my pants is gonna be how long ago did I shave my legs? Because if it's like one or two days after I shave my legs, then I then I got that like inner thigh shape going on and like razor burn. So then I'll wear like the tight pants that like there's no space like in in the crotch, like you know what I mean. Yeah. But once my leg hair is grown out a little bit, that's when like the baggier pants come out. They have like a lower like hanging crotch, like like the Juji pants or something like that. You know. Oh yeah. I, mean, I pretty yeah. much always wear a tank top, just in case, and then like a t-shirt or like a flannel over it, and then just see how the workout goes. Like if I'm if I'm doing an upper body and like the workout's going really well and I'm covered up, like I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to keep the pump going, stay focused, not get distracted by looking at myself in the mirror. But then you have those days where you're just feeling good. You know, there might be a few extra people in the gym. You just got to let everyone know what's up. Take off the pump over. <laughs> I feel like uh, arm day, it's always a tank top, no matter what. Um, probably with pants. For back day, it's probably pants and a baggy shirt with a tank top underneath. Probably same thing for chest and shoulders. And then legs, I just don't, same thing, but... You know, I don't bother wearing the tank top. Yeah, so <laughs> so the only, shirt, the no, the only time I don't see you in the gym with a tank top on is leg day. <laughs> it's the only time it doesn't come off. <laughs> like you're training clients in a tank top, dude. <laughs> Sometimes. It depends <laughs> if it was like right after a workout or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know? As you should, bro. You're fucking huge, man. Yeah. A little, a little extra motivation for them, you know? Yeah, that's it. Like, you want to get on my, you want to look like this, boys? Three extra reps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Um, Fuck, man. The Arnold is like a week away now. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Big weekend. Let's go. It's gonna be good. Looks like um, what I what I can see from this year is everybody's bringing something like basically their best. You know, from what I can see, everybody's leveled up. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, you wonder why. I, I always think this too. Like you know, like a week out, two weeks out, everyone's looking crazy, hard or granite. You know, after you have like a high day, like you're looking full, and then everyone does all this crazy shit peak, peak week <laughs> every time. Yeah. Like even the pros, right? Yeah, yeah, Milos. Like, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no. Listen, we know. Um, and it's just like I feel like if most of these guys just like kept just living their like yeah. doing exactly what they're doing now, like up until like the day before, you know, they would probably all look their best. But yeah, because they fill and spill, people. and then they look like trash. Yeah, yeah. two thousand grams of carbs, two hundred units insulin, and they spill over, and then they clean it up with diuretics. Like worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they just it's look so dumb. Hands. They all look so good right now. They should just stay where the where they are. Yeah, man. I know. It's like you really wonder, like, if that whole carbon up thing is like, like, even like depleting and then carbon up. No. It's like just don't look, even deplete. They like, should almost the judges should just push and show up a week right now. They should all just get on stage now. Be much more yeah. entertaining. Yeah, that that would you know, be like cool. Regan Grimes. I I hate to say I'm not judging anyone. Regan Grimes is like notorious for that, right? Like he looks fantastic after the show, and then he gets on stage and you're like, Ugh, what happened? Yeah, like, like against like, Milos, yeah. I think, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's like the Milos thing, like like strikes out like nine times out of ten, but then like it worked for him and nobody else. Well, well, or just like you know, Samson will have like one really good showing, and then everyone's just like swears by like Milos's ways, like you <laughs> know what I mean. <laughs> like I, th I find that does happen sometimes for sure. I feel like a good athlete will kind of always, they'll always be able to perform even if you like. Unless you've like hospitalized them, I mean they're gonna do the thing, you know. You can only really fuck someone up so much, right? Like, I mean, I want an overall super heavyweight overall uh, from with a coach. I won't even say his name because he doesn't even deserve that. But you know, one of these mad scientist guys, and he put me on like, first of all, we 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 sodium loaded, all right, and like to the point where the amount of sodium he wanted me to consume wasn't palatable so i actually had to do half otherwise i just couldn't consume it it was just impossible because it was so disgusting um so i ballooned up like probably 15 or 20 pounds within a week and then wow. he was like okay now we're gonna do uh lasix i'm like cool cool awesome <laughs> so he's like he's like go go grab your lasix oh and and make sure you grab some uh potassium chloride i'm like cool cool so i grabbed this shit by the way it was hard to fucking find but and I get this stuff. I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? He's like, all right, so you're gonna take the Lasix, um, and then you're gonna have to take this specific amount of uh, potassium chloride so your heart doesn't stop. By the way, mm -hmm. don't do too too do too much of the potassium chloride, or your heart will stop 
either way. I'm like, oh, okay, dude. And, you know, the only reason I trusted him kind of was, you know, at that point I was a week out. And I'm just like, whatever. But he was like, okay, you're going to take the Lasix and in, in 45 minutes, call me back. You're going to piss like two pounds out or something. I'm like, whatever. And then I did that and I was like, oh, fuck. And then I thought he was like God, right? I'm like, oh, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, safe to say, even like I said, like a lot of the things he told me to do, I just told him I'm not doing that. You know, like doing uh, that plus um, aldactone. He wanted me to run aldactone on top of the Lasix. Said, no, not doing that. Um, and he had to, and the whole thing is he had success doing that protocol with other guys. I was talking to another guy. I was like, you did this, right? He's like, and that guy won an overall. So these coaches can somehow produce the win, but don't give the coach the credit, man. They're fucking insane people. Um, and the athlete is always going to shine because that's what an athlete does, right? If they're champion. So that's why, I, that's why I figured it out. Um, like you guys said, fucking when you get to the pros, most of us aren't even doing really anything. We're just like waiting around. We're in condition, maybe a little bit of tweaks here and there, but nothing, nothing serious going on on peak week. Um, all right. Anyway, you want to get into some questions then? Sure. Cool. Cool. Um, any, any tips on, we'll start it off light. Any tips on PCT? For me? Let's go with Kurt first. Yeah. So there is no science to support PCT. It might help you mentally. I would say you probably shouldn't become what, what are people coming off for? I don't understand that first of all. <laughs> and second of all, there is no science to so the outcome. The outcome is the same. So like, if you're going to recover at 70%, you're going to recover at 70%, whether you use Clomid and Novodix or you don't like, it might be a more miserable journey to that 70%, but it's not going to change your recovery. And there's no data to support that. So I think PCT is a thing of the past. I'd say if you're mature enough to be doing steroids, you should probably be blasting and cruising. You shouldn't be coming on and off. Like, what? What the heck is the point of that? Yeah, I think I think honestly, it's it's all in in the if you're if you're going into let's say bodybuilding where uh, you're trying to be competitive. I don't. I agree. Like honestly, like I don't think there's there's a point in necessarily using a PCT. Um, but I mean, if if you've been to the point where you have used something and now you're just trying to i don't know like you just don't want to take it anymore i guess there would be but i again i think i would i would only go with like an hcg or an hmg you know i don't think i would go to kind of just work on uh fertility meters and stuff like that like i don't think i would try to go uh and use clomid or, or stuff like that you know I, I think that's kind of where i would go uh and that's only case by case you know i don't think that there's um it's it's really depending on where you're going you know if you're trying to uh be competitive in bodybuilding i think coming off or at least doing a trt dose just to keep your level like stable crashing yourself i don't think uh is any healthier than trying to just come off completely you know mm -hmm. yeah for sure Th there used to be that uh that myth right whereas if you went down to zero and let your you know we, we talked about this last time kurt but letting your um your engine receptors you know re-regulate some bullshit like that <clears throat> but i think a lot of people they want to do the pct because they feel like it's a healthier way or somehow a safer option but you know i tell people that i don't like clomid because it changes the receptors of estrogen in your brain as well which we probably don't want and there's so many better options and if we were going to pct you know yeah, like you guys said, what I mean, you have to ask yourself why you're doing that. You know, yeah. why did why did you start steroids in the first place? Maybe yeah. would be it would be a good question. Because if you're half in and half out, then there's a time where you're you're probably thinking, okay, I'm focused and using this stuff to the best of my ability. Now I'm I'm doing some other thing. Maybe I'm going away from that lifestyle. That's you know, from what I see, a lot of people do they they do live their life like that, where they're they're literally coming off. But it comes with, you know, depression. A lot of those people are going to be, not only are they making themselves less healthy, but they're just making themselves like mentally sick a little bit from, from that shit, you know, from going up and down and always having your hormones crashing and spiking. It's, it, it's kind of a fucked up way to live when you think about it, man. So yeah, cool. Um, 
bra or nah? Do guys on cycle pull out or nah? <laughs> I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's always, a chance. there's always a chance, right? <laughs> I'm married. I already yeah. have kids. Yeah. I'm unless, old. yeah. Unless you're trying to have kids, you should probably pull out, man. Yeah, I guess. I mean, what's yeah. worse? I have more kids. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> if you don't want kids and you're not pulling out, then that's, you know, irresponsible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. Or if you don't know the person. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. <laughs> uh, thoughts on NDT. You know what that is, Kurt? NDT. Uh, the context is versus use of synthetic T4, T3. NDT. Oh. I don't. N NDT. Up. I've never heard of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you guys give us these, uh, these, uh, was it synonym? Whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, I, we I don't know what those mean. Um, it's versus synthetic T4. Thoughts on NDT versus use of synthetic T4 slash T3. T4 slash T3, like, not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, natural desiccated thyroid drugs. Sorry. I've never uh, heard that abbreviation before. Uh, they mean, like, armor, I'm guessing? Hold on a sec. I mean, these things are not popular whatsoever. So who would think? I'm sorry. I'm not even going to say it. Yeah, I would just say, <laughs> it, 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 most likely they're talking about armor thyroid versus T3 or T4 separate. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the person. It's like... Depends on what the need is. I also think that people need to get fucking labs before they go medicate themselves yeah, with thyroid medicine. Yeah. But I think, um, or at least consult someone that knows how to look at labs. I think um, it depends on the person. You could take, one of us could take a blend, right? You could take 100 milligrams of test probe with 100 milligrams of master and 100 milligrams of trinacetate. Maybe that's a good ratio for you, but perhaps the next guy sitting next to you, that's a shit ratio for you. I don't know. I Usually people would mix and match. Or use as you needed, right? Because you might not need T4 and T3. Yeah. Might not need any, any of them. I don't know. Yeah. I'd also say like uh like desiccated thyroid, whatever that is, um, like some natural thing is gonna be not even close to the same thing. No. There's I mean armor question, armor is a valid though. drug, but it's just yeah, it's desiccated pig thyroid from China. But but yeah, that's the thing. Like, what's the context too? I mean, like, are yeah, we are we talking about like rejuvenating levels? Like, what I'm are thinking we thinking about we... bodybuilding? I mean, I'm, yeah. Like, but even I think mean, about if it, like if we're talking bodybuilding. I mean, I don't think there's there's anything that would be uh, close to using T3 if you got pharmaceutical grade. You know, like I I don't I don't see the purpose in adding something else. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, for bodybuilding, why would you mess around? Yeah, I mean, imagine like just giving that to your client. Like, you know, I think we're gonna take it easy this time. You know. <laughs> Instead of using T3, we're just going to... It's a natural supplement. Yeah. <laughs> so many of these questions are just, like, pointless, right? Because it's just, like, like, is this better than this? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It's just an opinion. You know, exactly. I, it's funny because I get this... We almost have the same audience because I feel like I, when I do a QA, and a I get the same list of questions. So it's the same people yeah, <laughs> going yeah. in a circle. Yeah, no. Sure. And if I don't answer it, why I stopped doing them the last two weeks because I get the same ones here. I'd rather just answer them with you guys and sit alone and do them. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just did a Q&A and I get so many questions, like... You're like like uh, like test C and T ball like thoughts really yeah, no thoughts yeah, they, they fucking work man <laughs> like, I don't know no thoughts either do them or don't do your body they will do their job <laughs> they're like, steroids that's that's yeah, right yeah I think. Or like is, <laughs> is T test D better than test C it's like it maybe you mix them together you, and do them both yeah, yeah. yeah. you know take a bottle of each dependent. twice a week all this shit's dependent on the person and the goal so yeah. there's nothing definite in bodybuilding like across the board um okay yeah, let's move on um managing bloating stomach distress while food is at its highest in the off season it's a really good question um what do you what do you guys do to manage your bloating and 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 how do you uh handle eating that much food in an off season i usually have something in the morning that will help me um you know like having sort of like a blend of like either fibers or a green stuff like that that kind of like helps you manage like the acidity that you might have during your day when you're you're eating a, a huge amount of protein and, and just food in general and uh, also having a support of enzymes in your meals and probiotics i think that's kind of like the 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 most the easiest and like i would say that that i use and then if there's more to it then it's actually finding what is could be causing bloating 
So if there's if there's something that's probably not agreeing with you, then looking at what you change in your diet or just something comes. Sometimes people actually like create intolerances just because they eat the same the same food sources over and over and over again. So then trying to find like what could be causing the bloating and then adjusting the diet or even coming off a little bit, like just maybe like a, a day of fasting. You know, I've, I've talked about this in another podcast, but like just having maybe a day that we're backing off, just eating like vegetables, stuff like that, just kind of like giving your, your digestive system a break uh, could be beneficial as well. Yeah. I agree with that big time. I think that like you need to deload your digestive system. Like you do training every now and then, like if you're having consecutive weeks where you're pushing food and dealing with bloating, your appetite's super low. Just pull back, cut your carbs in half for a week, give yeah. your body a break yeah. and your appetite is going to come up so high because it's used to that massive amount of food. You take yeah. that away, even though you're bloated and stop eating that, your body's still going to be like, hey, what the hell? Like, where is all this food that I'm used to? Right. Even from a food volume standpoint itself. But I think the biggest thing is just like if you're eating a meal, like all my meals are huge right now. They're all over a thousand calories. So every time I eat, I feel full for like an hour after I eat. Right. But then I try to get up and move around, whether it's walk my dog, do some chores, something like that. Yeah hour and a half after I eat, I'm hungry again. So I know that that blow was just the food volume. It's just my body doing what it has to do with the food. The fact that I'm hungry now, you know, an hour and a half later means I digested everything fine and I'm ready for the next meal. If you're, dig if you're bloated until your next meal, then you you ate something that your body is just not digesting well. So you yep. need to eliminate that, find a different source. And I think this is a, the struggle with a lot of people in bodybuilding. And I think it holds them back is that people need too much variety you know, from a mental standpoint and like when you're eating for performance, you need to kind of be able to push that to the side and just eat the foods consistently that are going to digest well for you and yeah. allow you to grow and get in the food you need. Like if you're so caught up and constantly making every meal taste good or having these foods and that you like that don't agree with you, you're just going to hold yourself back. So that's just one more sacrifice that people need to make that usually they're, they're not willing to in most cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely some really good points there. And uh, yeah, what you're saying, Justin, about the food, you know, you can all you should also get food intolerances from mixing certain combinations of foods. So if yeah. you're say intolerant to let's say gluten or yeast or something like this, and you're always eating, you know, hamburgers, for example, you know, over time your body can now start to build up that that same kind of uh, response, allergic response, the histamine response to red meat, for example, or or other things that you're eating. So even even foods on their own and then combined with other foods becomes different in your body somehow. But, you know, with uh, like what, what Mo was saying about, you know, when you're eating a lot of food, when you're when you're not hungry to eat food, you have to move your body. So if I know I have to eat a meal or like, you know, it's been an hour and a half and I'm still feeling really full from a meal, like I know that I have to eat soon. So I'm going to try to move my body. Like if I've been sitting here all day, I'm going to go try to walk the dog, move my body so that when I come back to the house, I'm ready to eat a meal or, or more likely to be ready. Right. So. I think a lot of guys that are they're they're struggling to eat a lot of food because they're maybe in the mindset of not moving their bodies to preserve calories. But when you're always moving, your metabolism goes up and you're going to be hungrier for food because your body will demand that energy, especially if you combine that with really eating clean foods. And you guys nailed it, like picking the foods that digest well for you. It doesn't really matter if you prefer chicken over fish. If your body and you go and you get a sensitivity test and your body's intolerant to chicken, you better take that out because you're going to be always fighting against yourself. I haven't eaten chicken in like months, man. Like I feel so much better with fish and my, my inflammation has been going down every week that I haven't been eating chicken, you know, and other things too, like, you know, gluten, that kind of shit. Right. But yeah. just knowing, knowing my body and even though I love those things, I wish I could eat them. They don't stand stand efforting the vertical diet like that guy like if you are having trouble with digestion just like go take a look at that like again yeah. it's one of those things like you don't need to do exactly everything that he says but there are some really good points there just in like food choices obviously keeping things like you know to whole foods and then also like you know robin just said about activity like 10 to 15 minute walks in between meals you know that is that's massive guys like i can speak for myself like you know i've gotten up to 330 pounds i'm currently 320 pounds um, you know, I had two dogs, like a lot of people know that, like I used to walk a lot, like I was notorious for that. Like I would take these dogs for like three or four walks a day. 
and I was getting 10, 11,000 steps in, in the off season at like over 320 pounds, but I kept growing and growing because, and I truly think that those walks were like the key to it, just uh, helping my body metabolize that food and turn into energy. Right. So I think if that's one thing you should definitely try for having trouble with bloating and digestion is just like move a little bit more and it will yeah. build for you. But the, the cool thing about, a good point. yeah, I, just, I really like you, what you guys said was all brilliant. I have nothing to contribute except the walking thing is really cool because walking will actually clear blood glucose out of your body without using insulin. So it's another way to keep, especially if you're shoveling in food, it's another way to keep yourself from becoming diabetic mm. just by moving. Right. Yeah. There's a, there, there's a good study on that where they, um, they, they took people that were having a, a hard time um, with their blood glucose, keeping it uh, within levels. But these people were like working desk jobs, something like that. So they just had them do uh, stationary, um, like seated calf raises on the floor. And even just doing like, like pretty low intensity, just doing that, uh, reduced their blood sugar quite a bit. So for sedentary people, it's like, you have no excuse. You know, I mean, if, if you're running high blood glucose and no matter who you are, if you're trying to build muscle, especially, I mean, dude, if you're sitting at a desk and you, and you, you know, <laughs> you're running, you're eating food all day long. You're running high blood glucose, but you you know you can't take a break, can't go for a walk. Just sit there, do seated calf raises, man. It's going to help you so much. But getting that blood flow, like you said, that's huge. Getting the digestion going with uh, with movement is is huge. You know, because nobody nobody wants to be a three hundred plus pounds slob. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good when you when you you know walk up a flight of stairs and are out of breath. It just does not fucking feel good. You know, not only that, but like if you're out of shape, you're not going to be able to push yourself on leg day. Leg day, you need to have that wind in you. So, yep. anyway, um, <laughs> fucking acronyms, man. You guys will know this one though. Let's see if you let's see if you get it. G for P for a Sandow. G for P for a Sandow. Oh, for a Sandow. For a Sandow. I mean, how how G? Yeah, what are we <laughs> <laughs> Am I by myself? How gay we talk? <laughs> yeah. Not another, by yourself, uh, man. Because someone's paying you. Someone, someone's the P, and you're the G, right? So, dude, if, if you were the P, then that's that's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, no, nah, I'm not even gonna say it. <laughs> let's just say uh, let's just say, say no. no. Let's say no. no. <laughs> yeah. Let's say face here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, imagine, yeah. Um, why do some coaches like to use low dose clen all year long? Never heard of that. I don't know. I've heard of it. I don't know why. Who knows? It's dumb. It's dangerous. Have you guys ever heard? I, I'll just run this by you guys now. Um, have you guys ever heard of someone doing a cycle like 250 milligrams of test a week with a thousand milligrams of master on a week? It seems common now. Not doesn't right. It. But it seems common. Doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, so I'm trying the, to uh, wrap my head around it and why it's so common. Do you want me to explain where it came from? Uh, you can, yeah, I'd love to know. So my understanding, so it it came from like what I was taught in school. There were a couple of doctors in the Southern United States that were pushing riding estrogen high and hematocrit high, which makes no fucking sense to me. And this started to catch on with the HRT clinics. And then you had guys like Derek for more plates, more dates, when he was doing big podcasts, talk about riding estrogen really high, riding tests really low, and using another anabolic in there. And it generally was primo. And then you have guys like Victor Black that then took this thing to a whole other place and started pushing Masteron really high. And so now you have it really Masteron. I probably get more questions daily about Masteron than anything else. It is like the fucking cow's tits. I don't know why people give a shit about Masteron. And everyone wants to run it in gram quantity with these bullshit amounts of tests, thinking that they're going to get fucking huge. It's the to me, it's the silliest thing. There's so many better compounds out there. The Masteron for size, yeah, yeah. Because that's why your fucking test it. high. Like, and, and everyone is terrified of using an AI now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I'll tell like right? I'll tell you medically because I study this. There's nothing wrong with an AI when it's used properly. It's been studied for forty fucking years. Even in children, we use it for delayed growth in kids. Yeah. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to crush your fucking lipids. If you crush your estrogen, clearly it's going to destroy your lipids. But if you're using it responsibly, and I explain to people when you get to your level or any of your level, you're going to have to run enough tests at some point to get that big. 
you're going to be using an AI. There's not going to be, you're not going to just run three grams of master on a primo in there to squash it. Like you use something advantageous like EQ or trend or something that's actually going to cause freaking growth Yeah, at an, an accelerated rate. Right. I mean, that's, that's all I can think of. It's like people that are trying to like run a cycle with perfect blood work or something like that. But like, it's not going to be perfect blood work. And also, okay. so master on, we just did a metabolite study on it. We just discovered some new metabolites that have potential for cancer, but two of the metabolites are master on are cytotoxic. They'll kill you. So like, it's not necessarily any safer than anything else. So yeah. guys are like, yeah, but nandrolones, you know, well, it's toxic to your brain. They, it's a steroid. They're all toxic. Yeah. 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 No, it's like not. running two grams of anything is not good for you long term. <laughs> there's only, there's only one uh, safest steroid. It's uh, testosterone. Right. Yeah. But at a gram quantity, like, you know, like I can yeah. say medically 600 milligrams is proven safe in most situations. If you're not predisposed to some disease after that, yeah. like we don't really look at amounts past that. So like, I can't say for without with certainty that like a gram won't eventually hurt you. Will it? I don't know, but I couldn't tell you it won't. Mm -hmm. Mastron yeah. is overrated. I just think it's overrated. I think it has a purpose in a cutting cycle. I don't know why everyone's trying to use it now in the middle of their bulking cycle. Yeah, has anyone does anyone know anyone who's huge that does that? John Jewett. John Jewett, yeah, John Jewett. But again, so and I'm friends I'm friends of John, yeah. so I'm not bad mouthing John. But that's not Ooh. what got John to his size. Exactly. So like I think that's what's exactly. misinterpreted. Yeah. Is John's like a guy like you guys, he got to his size doing X, Y, and Z. I'm not gonna disclose what John runs, but and then now that he's refining his physique, right? He doesn't need to be any bigger. He's just honing in little parts. He can run a two grams of test and a gram of master on to kind of tweak that a little bit without holding water and but that's not it's not what he ran for a decade to get there right yeah he was probably yeah. using five grams of other things stacked but i and think a lot of growth in there because that's that's what i that's what right. i see kind of like disciples of his that are that seem to be like yeah kind of making this like a thing right and i'm just like okay someone show me someone who got big doing this no one I haven't no one. seen it yet no right. one but is that but is that the belief that i don't i'm, I'm not sure but because i because i'm not i'm not going to try to debate because i don't know but is that what the purpose of what people are doing for like yeah. are they are they yeah. making, yeah. They're they're doing it as an anabolic season cycles dude yeah they're doing it as an anabolic right. one probably because they can't get real primo or they can't afford it yeah. and and they're following what other they, everyone copycats so like what you guys set the standard for what other people run whether you realize it or not like we talk about these things I've gone on Reddit before. There's entire threads about things we've talked about. Like, so yeah. it's like everything we say in any capacity, people absorb. So yeah. they copy it and they just take things out of context. They don't realize yeah, what you're yeah, actually yeah, doing or yeah. what, you know, what the purpose yeah. is. Like if I saw any of you guys in the gym, I'm not going to be like, what's your training split? Like if you're a brand new lifter, why does it matter what you do now? It matters what you did yeah. to get there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like you didn't do calf and ab day when you were new. <laughs> you probably did like some sort of push pull legs or some sort of whole body bullshit when you were new like you didn't yes. divide up the body parts because you didn't need to yeah. you know, same as like you didn't need two grams of test <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah i don't know but yeah that's i just because i get the master on thing all the time and it's frustrating because it's not there's nothing wrong with it it's just used incorrectly and i don't know why all of a sudden everyone wants to do that of all yeah dangerous. i think that's the best point like that's something i've heard too about like people like not being able to get real primo so like this is kind of what they resort to yeah but primo and master on are not similar so it's i like, know it's I like know. it's I like know. i couldn't get trends so i used eq <laughs> but they're not the same it doesn't that's matter what I, that, that's what i that's like what goes from find a better people. source i don't know i'm just like like you don't really know much about what you're talking about do you <laughs> you know and not everyone's and again like not everything just because something works for you or you doesn't mean it's work for me like Primo, real Primo crushes my estrogen in a certain amount. Like if I run more than four to six, four to 600 of it with a gram and a half a test, it crushes my estrogen. So I can't use that as a primary anabolic anymore. I can use it in with other stuff, but you might be able to run two grams of Primo and be totally fine. Yeah. Right. But does that mean that I need to copy what you're doing because it works for you? Probably not. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, man, people just need to accept, like, if you're going to get big, like you have to somewhat do like risky things, like, but yeah. don't like, stop, don't get into bodybuilding, trying to be healthy, man. No, like, it's not the deal. Try to stay as healthy as you can while you yes. do it. Monitor your blood work, all that shit. But like, if you're serious about this, serious about getting big, you want to be 250, 260 on stage. Listen, your test is going to get to 750 or a thousand, maybe higher. Like that's just, that's every single person who's huge has ran those numbers or, or, or higher, probably higher. Most higher. Times. Right with nandrolones, yeah. Right with high doses of GH, with insulin, things like that. So, it's again, this is just this is just 
classic bodybuilding people trying to reinvent the wheel like you yeah. know what i mean just trying to find new ways to do to, to to achieve the same result that guys were getting in the 90s and early 2000s like that's what i always fall back on when it comes to drugs and training i'm like look these this this is some of the craziest physiques we ever saw like let's just look what these guys were doing like why are we trying to do different shit There's no need. let's do the same thing and just monitor our, our health better yeah right. like my whole business model is to i'm trying to bring health to the bodybuilding world that being said this didn't even healthy and stupid yeah just misusing things because you have the guys of being healthy is dumb that doesn't have a place in bodybuilding yeah, if you exactly. want to be healthy, then go be just a regular gym bro that's slightly enhanced and look better than everyone else in your local gym. If you want to be 340 pounds, you're not going to, you're going to sacrifice at some point, some level of health, right? It doesn't mean you're not healthy now. It doesn't mean you're not trying to, you're not trying to kill yourself, no. but every guy that I know, you know, that's one of the, like, one of the things I love about Roman Fritz is that he's honest. He doesn't give a shit. He'll tell you what he does. doesn't yeah. matter. And some of it seems terrifying to average people, but that's what guys your size do. That's that's a game, man. Like you're, you know, you want to be a pro. Like you're in this, and now you're competing against a, a bunch of other crazy people. And it's like if you actually want to be competitive, like you're, you you got to get crazy a little bit. Like you got to be willing to push the limits. Like that's it. You're at pro bodybuilding, open bodybuilding. Like trust me, man. These guys are sick dudes yeah. like, you know and they're willing to do whatever it takes to win so don't come in here pussyfooting and then when you don't get the results be like oh uh, it's my genetics <laughs> like you know it's just you know. Anyway. yeah they'll probably laugh because i did uh, uh did a uh, trend and mast only cycle for the last weeks before my pro card <laughs> dry you were dry though i was dry man but i was i was pretty fucking dry this time and i still can't yeah, but you know, that was for a though. purpose that wasn't to grow yeah. exactly and it was only no. four weeks yeah and you were pro qualified. There's a big difference between you and a just yeah. a regular dude in the gym. But and then the other thing too, and just you know, I did that, and that year I used some diuretics. This year I was just as dry, if not drier than that. Kept testing, you know, kept GH in, didn't use diuretics. So completely the opposite. Still just as dry, if not drier. So, but that's I'm sure you guys all have the same experiences as you grow in this sport, or as you get older and more experienced in these things, you you can do shit differently. Right. Like, it's, yeah. You know, I when mean, you like, might have needed an AI with 300 milligrams of test when you first started, you can probably run a gram with no, right? You don't carry enough yeah. fat in now. P you people attribute, people, things. people, people truly believe and attribute a steroid with a certain look. Like, Primo will give you the look of the guys in the 90s, and Can't say that. strong will make you look hard and dry. And, like, that's no, so dude. stupid. <laughs> no, <laughs> conditioning, go get better parents. If you, you want to look like Flex okay. Wheeler, go get better parents. Yeah. Conditioning. That, that's the only discussion we need to have. Just, just run high test. Okay. And do throw in a couple other compounds, like a bit of Mastron, a bit of Primo, maybe a bit of MPP, and you're good if you can handle the MPP. Growth and insulin. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's exactly. all you need that's to do. It. Just do that over yeah. and over. Come off For your years, schedule, years get and your years blood years. works done. If you're healthy, do it again. <laughs> like, yeah. Know. I mean, I just, I keep it real. When people ask, I try to keep it simple with the guys your size that I work with. It's test as high as you can tolerate. Yeah. It's another anabolic or two as high as you can tolerate. It's as much growth hormone as you can tolerate and afford. And then insulin is needed, depending on how much food you're eating. That's exactly. the formula. There's no fucking secret. It's generally not orals in the off season anymore. The days of that are pretty much done outside of spot stuff. Like, cause you need a little more strength or you need this or that. But like the days are running D ball pretty much gone for most guys. Yeah. Do you, do you guys, uh, do you guys remember uh, Alexei Lezukov? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah. man. Crazy. He was like one of my favorite foods. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about, Kurt? No. Justin, do you know who he is? No. Okay. He was kind of like a younger, like Russian guy, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just kind of like disappeared. Is yes. he a pro? I don't, I don't know. know. If he ever was a pro, was he? He, 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 he was big really on Instagram. Good. He was big on Instagram. I'm gonna find him right now and show you guys. Yeah, he was he, he was the, the whole the whole my whole yeah. point <laughs> why I'm bringing him up. Uh because I truly thought that I would look like him if I uh like like Decca. Like I thought like Somebody told me he took Deca, and I'm like, oh yeah, like that's yeah. that's how you get that look to look like this guy. It's it's the Deca baby, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I have seen that guy before. I don't know what's happening here, but yeah, this guy right here. Yeah, I've seen him before. Yeah, hey, what happened to him? I don't know. Too much. Did he that, though? That's crazy. That's crazy, right? Crazy. And and I remember him like uh, having just a ridiculous chest, like. He's young too. Young man. 
Look at that chest, dude. Whoa. Like, what is that, man? That, that looks like oil in there. That's Deca, baby. <laughs> That's Deca, baby. Yeah, it's a big ass chest, man. That's crazy, right? Yeah, I know. That's you know, fucking crazy, man. But like, you're never gonna look like that guy if you don't have that genetic no and that's you know? But, you know paul barnett and i talk about this too i don't mean to keep hijacking stuff but like the genetic thing is so confusing to people if i say i can't play basketball because i'm five foot seven people understand that they're like definitely not dude you're short as hell you're not dunking anything but if you say to somebody you don't have the genetics to be a pro bodybuilder they like no what do, what do you mean i don't no it's i just it's one cycle i just need to figure out what the other guys are doing and then i'll be there or it just I need to change my diet or my my training splits wrong. If I if I split up calves and abs on a day, th then I'll be on the Olympia stage. No, dude, your genetics suck. And then they want to know how they know when their genetics are good. You would know because you'd be the biggest dude in your gym after six months of lifting. And this everyone one. would be coming up. Like you said, Mo, every time you wear shorts, guys are like, what the fuck happened to your legs? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly, man. And you see, like, I know, like, we all know guys. Like, even guys that compete at, like, the national level that, like, it's just year after year and like they're running cycles and they're doing an off season. And Never getting anywhere. And they look the goddamn same or they look worse or they, you, you know, natural guys that look better than these guys that are. Yeah. Nice. And you're just like, yeah. dude, if you're after, if you're on like your third or fourth year of steroids and there's natural guys that look better than you, you're in trouble. Hang yeah. it up, dude. What yeah. are you doing? Man? No. And we all, but within that, we all then have a limit too. Right. So like, totally. you'll get to a point, like I, you know, I'm also older than you guys, but like you get to a point where that's as much as your body will tolerate. When I get to a certain weight, which mine is lower than when I get to 230, 240, my health goes down the toilet. I can't breathe. I snore. I waddle. I reg like I just feel like dog shit. For you guys, you're much taller than me, so you can get much heavier. But there's we all that point that your genetics will just run out. And that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like I, I know for like I'm a realist, man. Like I the only reason I keep I keep I am bodybuilding still is because I keep improving. You so keep I mean? going. That's yeah, exactly. But you're like, one in I'm, you're I'm, one I'm, in yeah, 10 I'm million guys. To the max, man. Like I'd be the first person to, to know, like, okay. Like I'm, I'm at my limit. Like I can't like keep pushing drugs. It's not going to do anything for me. Like I would step back. Right. But mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm been doing this for 10 years. I'm still getting better. I compare myself. I go to, I mean, I'm up here muscle fitness every day. It's easy to compare yourself to like other pros. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like I'm there. I'll keep doing this. It's worth it. It's worth the sacrifice. It's worth risking my health to a certain degree to keep doing this. Like, you know what I mean? But I, I think a lot of guys are, are just missing that. And like, they're, and it's sad to see, man, because you know that, like, what you we all know what it's like to be hooked on bodybuilding, be super passionate about it. Like, mm -hmm. it, that shit runs deep. It's hard to, it's yeah. hard to know it when you really love it, but it, it just gets to the point, man, where it's like you're you're on year ten of like trying to get a pro card. You know, it's yeah. like give it up at a certain point. Yeah, and we we grew up in that um, get bigger die trying era, right? It's like that was cool for a while, but it's like it's not cool when you know. Fuck. No, it's not cool. And you know what? You can do other shit with it. Like I dedicated my life now to helping other people get there. So you can still be part of that. Right. And I hang out with you guys. So what does it make yeah. a difference? Like if you're not going to go that far, you can still be in that world. Yeah, dude, exactly. And it doesn't mean you have to stop bodybuilding. It's just like, like I'll bodybuild forever. I'll train forever. I love training. Yeah. You know my dad's in his seventies and he still bodybuilds. Yeah, dude, doesn't exactly, matter. man. Be, yeah. be involved in the sport, help people, train people, like do what you want, body, like continue to train. But like when you're talking about competing, like every prep you do is, you know, it's hard on your health. Every time you blow up and get huge, it's, it's hard on your health. And it's like, if you're, if there's no purpose anymore, then you know, save yourself and your body for your family and, and things like that. Like, you know, there's, I'm sure if you've been bodybuilding for 10 years, there's all these people that supported you along the way. And it gets to a certain point, like you owe them, you know, yeah, so yeah. know when to hang it up and then to give, give your time back. Yeah. Right. And you'll, you guys will see when you have kids too, it, it makes a difference because prep gets, it gets rough around when your kids are little, it's, it's rough to do prep around them because it's, Dude, you feel like I, you're I've not, even said that to like myself. I'm a shitty, I'm a shitty dad when I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Like I've said that to myself. Cause like, I know the person I need to turn into to like be like, be in prep. And I, and like, I've said to myself, man, like if I had a kid, like I would probably seriously consider hanging it up because yeah. I don't like, you know, this is kind of going deep, but like for the first like 10 years of my life, like my dad wasn't really around, you know, until I got a stepfather. And I always said to myself, like, if I had a kid, like, I'm going to give him like the best life and like be the best dad. And like, I don't know if I can do that if I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah. You know? Well, you can do an extent, but you just have to be aware of it. You know, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, like, yeah. Well, even the same with your spouse. Can, like, like, yeah, I don't know if I can. Like, you know, uh, yeah. No, no, and I know, I know I can't, so I don't 
do that, yeah. you know? And yeah. like, same with my wife, like my wife has been with me for 20 years. Like she's tolerated a lot of bullshit with bodybuilding and this stuff that she probably didn't need to tolerate. Right. But she clearly sticks around for this, but like, yeah. you feel bad at a certain point when you push yeah. this all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause like, you, you think that we make all these sacrifices and stuff like for someone, no, like, they make like, more sacrifices than we do. <laughs> Yeah, but we benefit from the sacrifice. It's like yeah. these poor people that are around us are just like, okay, like you did a miserable thing. fuck like every day. Stop. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's what that's what um that's what yeah. Ben said when you know when he when he hung it up, like he was like in his prime, but he hung it up because he had kids and he was just like something changed. Like I don't, I just don't feel like I can like be that. You probably feel stupid, more. right? You probably feel yeah. dumb. Like you got a couple of kids at home and like you're missing out on everything because you're going to the gym and taking steroids and like being jacked and you're just like. This yeah. doesn't make sense. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. Know. Like one, my, when my daughter, my daughter's 13 now, but when she was five or six, I remember I was like really deep into a prep and she had a birthday party. She had kids over and they were eating pizza. And it's the sound of them eating pizza. And you guys know this, like you're on halo, you're on all sorts of things. Your mind is not right at this point. <laughs> and just the sound of the chewing drove me up the wall. I literally had to go for a walk. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't correct. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like I'm mentally unstable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like a, sleeping in your car not stable yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no exactly so that's the thing it's like and, and then you go back to like when we're in our 20s like you get huge or die trying like like i remember saying that dude like that was like my slogan like you know what i mean but like you hit 30 and like you got other shit going on in life and you're just like yeah i don't really want to die doing this like i don't want to be that guy like there's a lot more shit i want to do besides go to the gym and get on stage with my life like yeah. as much as i love bodybuilding and like i'm pursuing it as, as seriously as i can like that's, that's always in the back of my head. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Wait There's till you're, when you're my age and you're almost 50. I, I know tons of guys have died. Yeah. Like it's dude. a reality every day. I had, I go to funerals yeah. often, unfortunately, you know, not necessarily for bodybuilding, but just people yeah. die. But it puts things in perspective, right? Yeah. You're like, like, I know normal, tons of guys have heart attacks. Normal dude dropping dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, normal like, guys having heart attacks in my age. Yeah. And like, and then like we're here pushing food and pushing steroids and like, you know, so it's like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you just gotta keep it in your mind. You know what I mean? If it's worth it to pursue, then yes, do it. But, but God damn it. If it's not, just be real with yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, man. Light life. You know, it's, it's one of those things, man. You only get one man. Yeah. In, in, in 2017, um, uh, March March fourth, twenty seventeen. It was uh, the last time I talked to my my best friend Stu, because after that he was gone. You know, and I I just saw like uh, like our last uh, conversation, and like it was literally it says right here, yo, my conditioning, I can't believe it, so much better than before. And that was it. That's it. Didn't see him again. You know, so just enjoy the fucking journey, man. Yeah, but you know, you, you don't know. You just don't be know. grateful for the little things, you know. Yeah, if I mean, I feel it. like I I talk to you about that offline all the time. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's lighten it up. Like, this yeah, is a question right <laughs> more questions. Would you rather uh, be a girl and win an Olympia title, or continue to be a man? Continue to be a man, bro. Like what Olympia are we talking? <laughs> Can I be Miss Wellness? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, what about Mr. Wellness? <laughs> no, 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 we're not going there. Uh, <laughs> I don't think any of us are gonna be no, stay a like, dude. It'd be kind of sus. Off, be kind of sus when you guys are <laughs> Justin's thinking about it. Yeah, what would you be the girl to win the Olympia? I'm yeah, I'm I'm signing up for the wellness. I'm yeah. winning I'm winning that shit for sure. Dude, if you're missing if you're wellness <laughs> Olympia, think about all yeah, the I'm winning that you're gonna get. I'm get winning a lot of shit. I saw did you guys see uh Ross Flanagan was the guy that was like doing that men's wellness yeah. posing like like months ago. He was he was fucking around with that. Yeah, he was doing it before. Yeah. He was doing it before. Yeah, it looks pretty funny when he does it, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's a big fucking guy, eh? Like Ross is a big motherfucker. Yeah. Is he you know? tall? He's not tall. He's, he's not very tall. he's very light. He's yeah. extremely light body weight wise, but he's muscular. It just yeah, he's big. He looks thick as hell. He looks thick as hell. Yeah, he's just a u- unique uh, like he's got hollow bones or something. Yeah, <laughs> hollow bones. He's like a bird. <laughs> like this guy got on stage at like two twenty, man, <laughs> in the open and like really third place. He was like two twenty something. Oh yeah, he told oh, me. Well, yeah. I mean, he won a pro show. 
I think that's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. He, he did. Yeah, Ross brings up his back. He's he's gonna he beat Tonio. Yeah, he did beat Tonio. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, impressive, man. Yeah, impressive. So there's this <laughs> there's still hope for you, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Greek yogurt versus protein powder. Protein powder, protein for sure. Protein powder. Yeah. I, I used to really like doing like a scoop of protein powder in some Greek yogurt, putting in the freezer and eating it like ice cream. But like, nah, I don't really like Greek yogurt anymore. If you eat Greek, Greek yogurt more than like three times a week, you're fucking asking for trouble, man. Oh, Mo, I will say this not to go back to the family thing, but this is the coolest thing though. When you have kids, they grow up around this. My kids eat just like me, and they choose to eat like this. Like if I ask them what they want for dinner. It's fish and rice. It's chicken and rice. They'll pick between a white potato and a sweet potato. They don't use butter. They they do exactly this stuff. And they look at food like fuel. They're like the only teenagers that they like they completely look different and they never get sick. You must be so proud of that, eh? It just but it's like you didn't do it on purpose. They were just around it for so long that they just this yeah. is normal to them. Yeah, that's like, they're normal. used to seeing a rice cooker on the counter because that's yeah, dude. I mean, that's the ideal situation. Like you don't even gotta like Try to push it. On. I've never once like I did legs today with my daughter. Like my thirteen year old went to me went with me to do legs. Like we used different weights, but we did legs together. See, dude, you're living the dream, man. That's awesome, dude. So that's awesome, dude. That's the stuff that makes it worth it over absolutely. time. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That would be really cool to have like a little, just a little guy. You will to the gym. You will. My son's eight. He does pull ups on his own. One one of my one of my clients. Um, that's, she's she's yeah. a young young single mom. And uh, I trained her daughter. I trained her obviously at the gym, and I trained her daughter one day. And her daughter is like the cool, like just like like you were saying, Kurt. She's just the same way. She's trying to eat like a bodybuilder. She wants to get into competition, you know. She's she was sending me a screenshot. She's like, you know, she bought a she bought a book that you were reading with her own money. So you 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 know, especially when it's you know you're the parent, it's like that's like a window into you. But it's pretty cool for us to even just have like an influence on younger people in that way because i i mean i i I'd never really thought about how cool it would be for someone to be like i'm training with an ifbb pro because when i was that age and i thought like i was training with an ifbb pro i was fucking mind blown right so kind of cool to put that in perspective sometimes well and the yeah. amount of people you influence by default just by being on the show too true true you know yeah, you know right, like, between time. the four of us how many people in the world like over the world like not like pay attention to what you're saying yeah it's getting there definitely appreciate everybody subscribing and whatnot um this one's for kurt it's about terzapeptide does kurt believe that muscle loss occurs using terzapeptide even on a good cycle it shouldn't no those studies are generally in sedentary people that aren't weightlifting not eating adequate like it's on like the housewife in texas who's mm -hmm. drinking diet coke probably doing some cocaine Using those epic and no, I it should not even if you're, if you're losing muscle mass, if you're losing muscle mass on a cycle, then you probably got a problem. I, I question yeah. and and I think they're okay drugs. I just I question for someone who's truly a bodybuilder though, why you would struggle with appetite so much. Yeah, if yeah. Discipline of being a bodybuilder seems to but I'm not gonna judge anyone, you know. We all struggles, I guess, with shit. People are scared to lose muscle, like they're really scared to lose muscle, even if you weren't enhanced. You're just training with weights. I mean, that's pretty adequate to maintain muscle mass, assuming that you're eating adequate protein. Yeah. Right. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Like when clients come to me that are like on like a on GH and like a full blown cycle and prep, and like their food gets low, and they're like they're like actually think they can lose muscle, or they they think Dude, yeah they think they're gonna there are like lose four muscle. things that are made to make people not lose muscle. Yeah. Like like if you do sixty minutes of fasted cardio in the morning, you're gonna lose muscle. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if 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 humans were like that? If we were just that weak, that if we did an hour of fasted cardio, we'd lose muscle mass. We would never no. survive. No, like, the average person would have zero muscle. Used, I've used think, I've used GH in people with AIDS that weighed less than one hundred, like grown men that weighed less than one hundred twenty pounds. That are like, you got to figure out where you're going to stick the GH because they got nothing left on them, and the shit stops them from dying. So it ain't, and they're not moving. So that stop like. Yeah, it's not gonna you're, you and I are not losing muscle. Yeah. yeah. I think people confuse losing muscle with getting flat. Oh, like I think I think it's like fuck, like I'm 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 losing like glycogen uh fullness, so now I'm losing muscle. But most of the time that's what it is. It's you're just getting flatter, you're not losing muscle, you know. Yeah. And if you want to get ripped, you gotta lose glycogen. Or if you yeah. if you get yeah. like um like so attached to the weight 
like oh, I'm losing, I'm losing strength. Yeah. Like, okay, dude, pick a different exercise today. Totally. You know what I mean? And the judges don't know what you weigh. Yeah. They don't care. Like you're looking your best ever. It's like, but my bench has gone down, man. Like I think I'm losing strength. It, okay, pick a different exercise and go pose. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck. Yeah. Like, well, who, like, who here hasn't lost strength in a prep? When is that ever? Like you lose something, dude. Yeah, towards the I'm, end, I'm telling you, I, I've never felt so weak on a prep. This like for one week out Toronto, I was literally struggling with a fucking plate. Maybe a plate and a half, something like that. Col- you're also dealing with colitis, though. I know, but but that's like perspective Hell. again, because I I was like feeling like kind of shitty that day because a bunch of people came in. Like I saw like Dana Baker, and like I'm like, wait, why are these guys doing like three plates still? Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and I'm like literally like struggling with a plate and a half. But you're right. Like, I mean, I was in like no state to really train. I was just holding on. Yeah. Right. So. The strength doesn't really matter. You the like what kept me grounded was then every morning when I did my pictures, I looked better. And I just kept going, I look better today. I'm okay. I look better today. I'm okay. Like you said, Mo, as soon as I if I stop looking good and I started looking worse, I'd be like, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. Not forever, obviously, but for that prep, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know? So um we we've been on for a while. My phone died. I'm fucking thirsty and I have to piss. Do you guys wanna wanna call it? Sure. <laughs> It was a good show. No, it was, yeah, it was cool. Good. Yeah, and, and I, I really enjoyed chatting with you guys. So appreciate yeah. your boys for coming on tonight, and uh, we'll chat again. Mo, are you, Mo, you're going down to the Arnold? Yeah, yeah. You're going to be oh, there? Man. I'll see you. Can okay, I get you awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. Be happy to meet you, man. Awesome, dude. Definitely. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we'll hook up for sure. See you in a week. Yeah, yeah. dude. I can't wait, man. It's my first one. Very cool. Yeah, yeah mine too. Later.